like when you're out in a community um, in, a, in a place that you might not be as familiar with and you're trying to help people, you see a really vulnerable side of people um, that I just really appreciate. Um, and like the stories and the human connections that you hear when you're experiencing these events really are what I think like I want out of the college experience. That's podcast. Tap in. That's it. Subscribe. <laughs>to episode 10 of the Stu3 podcast. Uh, today, I'm your host, Arkush Dan, and I am with the fantastic team of the Community Service Center at BU, um, Sam Vu and Juliet. How are you guys doing? Uh, would you mind giving just a brief background on yourselves? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, my name is Sam Wu. I'm a math and computer science major here at uh, Boston University and my role at the CSC is the campus partnerships. Um, what I kind of do is doing outreach on both sides, both to student organizations and to our campus partners across Boston. Hi, um, I'm Juliet. Um, I'm a senior in the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm studying political science as my major and Persian cultural studies as my minor. Um, at the CSC, I'm one of the program managers of the Empowerment League, along with my co-program manager, Swazi, uh, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. Uh, but Empowerment League is um, our social justice-focused um, volunteer organization at the CSC. Great. So now, uh, for those of you listening who do not know what the CSC is, would you guys mind uh, elaborating what you guys do? Yeah, absolutely. So the CSC stands for the Community Service Center. Um, we're on the fourth floor of the GSU, um, and we're basically an organization that helps students get involved with community service uh, through several um, partnerships with community partners in the Boston area. Gotcha. So um, I know that there's, uh, thank you for the uh, uh, Tell me what you guys do. I'm sorry. I, I just don't, I want people to know what the CSC is because um, yeah, totally. what you guys do is completely, it's it's mind blowing. You guys are doing a fascinating service to, to the campus community. So um, I know that there's a lot of umbrellas in the CSC. Um, I'm actually um, talking to the siblings program tomorrow. I have my interview with them. So uh, real excited. Uh, and yeah, let's, uh, let's dive deep into what each of you guys does, first of all. So Juliet, you said that you're a part of the Empowerment League. What's that about? What do you guys do? Yeah, so as I said, Empowerment League is social justice volunteering, but obviously social justice is a super broad um, classification of community service. Uh, there's a lot of things that can fall under that. Um, so right now, this year, we're working with four main community partners in the Boston area. Um, we have Cradles to Crayons in Newton, which is a great organization um, that helps uh, provide clothing and other resources to underprivileged kids. Um, we have uh, the PD Green program, which helps incarcerated individuals get access to education. Um, Victory programs, which is doing a lot of great stuff um, in uh, public health and um, also um, providing um, under-resourced people access to uh, pretty vital uh, things that they need, such as food. Um, and then we have uh, Partners for Youth with Disabilities, where volunteers can uh, do a mentorship uh, with a youth with a disability. So we have um, some pretty broad ranges of service, and you can uh, kind of um, go into whatever aspect of social justice that you're most passionate about within um, those four community partners. And then we also do education and reflection events. Uh, last year, we partnered with the PD Green program to do an awesome education event um, about uh, essentially mass incarceration and the importance of providing good educational resources in prison. Um, so that was a great event. And this year, we're planning on doing some cool stuff uh, with environmental issues. Wow, that is fascinating. You guys are in every branch from education to helping incarcerated individuals. And uh, before I dive deep into that, because I do want to, um, what about you, Sam? What, uh, what are you doing in the CSC? Yeah, um, I'm part of Campus Partnerships, which is, which is like a little bit different of a program. Um, we're not really necessarily um, putting people out in service, but we, what we are in charge of is outreach uh, for the rest of the organizations that fall under the CSC umbrella. 
So um, what my role kind of is, is um, reaching out to different clubs here on campus and seeing if they want to do some community service opportunities. And if it's something that they're interested in, we'll try to um, connect them to some resources that we have at the CSC, including, you know, uh, Empowerment League or Days of Service, just so that the clubs have something that they can bring their, uh, uh, like the people, their members to. So. I remember you from Splash. You were the most energetic person. We were just walking by, and I told my I told my co-host Sam. I was like, he's also named Sam, by the way. Sorry. So he was like, Sam, we have to check these guys out. I love this guy's energy. So now, um, obviously, you mentioned that you obviously collaborate with a lot of clubs on campus, Sam and Juliet. Um, obviously, the Empowerment League. Um, you basically serve different buckets or genres of, um, I guess, um, you know, areas that people might be interested in volunteering in, right? Now, I know a lot of my friends or a lot of people on campus, they want to volunteer, but uh, the biggest reason that they cite for not just getting involved in the community um, is time. They're like, hey, we just don't have enough time to participate or um, it might be travel. They're like, we cannot travel to you know, 40 minutes downtown. So um, I know that for the siblings program that I'm enrolled in, we actually um, just meet the children on campus. So it's actually super convenient and you can actually just come in, I guess it's one time, right? With you guys, uh, you can be a one-time partner or you can come multiple times. So would you mind talking more about how it's not so hard and not that big of a time commitment to um, volunteer with the CSC? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think definitely um, we have a range of different types of volunteer opportunities depending on what kind of commitment you're looking for. If you are looking for a super regular um, commitment every week or month um, that you wanna maintain for a year, that's awesome. Um, and we do have programs for that um, with Empowerment League specifically. The PD Green uh, program is a super regular commitment. So is um, Partners for Youth with Disabilities. So that's um, long-term service if that is what you're interested in. But we all do also offer um, a pretty broad range of volunteer opportunities that are more one-time. Or you can do on a much more flexible schedule uh, where you don't have to worry about making sure that you block off some time every single week and you can kind of make it fit into your schedule more. Um, obviously, Empowerment League is the program I know the best because that is my program. Um, but for us specifically, we work with Cradles to Crayons to do sorting events um, every couple of months um, where there's no uh, commitment uh, level on the part of the students. They can go when they are free to, but if you can't make it to an event, does not uh, stop you from volunteering at all. Uh, we're partnering with Victory programs this year um, all of their service levels um, is signing up when you are available um, and you can make those determinations as the year goes on. So you can really make that fit into your schedule um, and you can even do group volunteering if you're interested in volunteering with friends and don't want to go alone. Um, so you can definitely uh, make it work on your schedule and if time is something that you are worried about, I would definitely recommend reaching out and making sure um, that the programs that you're um, interested in do fit in uh, with your schedule. But I think transportation is something that you mentioned that's also super important to talk about. Obviously, there can be a lot of equity issues when we're talking about transportation. And I know for college students, especially, um, it's not always the easiest to get around. Most people here don't have cars. So as much as people maybe would like um, to volunteer a little bit farther away, it can definitely be difficult for people. So we do try to alleviate some of that burden. Um, we can offer um, transportation reimbursements um, and Charlie cards and things like that um, for people that do need them in order to get to their service. And we do also have CSC vans at our disposal for when they're necessary, uh, where we can actually um, transport volunteers uh, to different service opportunities if they're not super accessible by public transportation, which is the case um, for a few of our community partners. So that kind of takes some of that um, struggle out of volunteering for sure. Yeah. And I don't mean to brag or anything, but I'm apparently the best van driver in the CSC. Yeah. So. I don't know. It's, it's yeah, a yeah, it's something spot. to brag about. It is something yeah. to brag about. <laughs> yeah. I can't even really 
um, try to take that title away from you, Sam, because I'm not van trained. So I guess undisputed. That's, that's, that's true. true. I'm the best navigator. That's probably true. All right. So I think you, what you're trying to say, and I think it's, I think that the message is pretty, um, pretty clear that you guys basically provide everything for the students. It's all they have to do is sign up, right? It goes from a few hours in the week to, you know, um, you could actually stick in for the long term for even months. Um, you're providing resources like Charlie cards and vans and obviously the undisputed best van driver, according to um, according to the both of you on call is Sam. I haven't talked to the rest of the people at the CSC, so <laughs> I'm going to take your word for it, Sam. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's I'm sorry. Problem. I just, but um, I think, what do you think, aside from like time commitments or, you know, travel issues, um, you guys touched upon that, but what do you think is the biggest mis misconception or the barrier that um, comes to mind uh, that prevents students from um, volunteering? Um, I think one of the things that like a lot of students struggle with is is finding maybe like enjoyment and really committing to the, the service. I, I know for a lot of people going out of their way to, to maybe like clean up some park doesn't seem appealing, like for a couple hours might not be the most appealing thing, um, but from my experience, and I think from the experience of most people at the CSC uh, and anyone who's done service with us, um, community service is a really, really good time. And it's a it, it benefits you in uh, more ways than just feeling good. You know, um, I've built a lot of connections with people through community service events. Um, I've grown as a person and I've really gained um, an appreciation for the city through these experiences. And so I think there's a lot to be gained personally from community service as well. Um, so it's we're not just benefiting the community we're we're benefiting everybody really um when we become a part of it and i think that's one of the main things with uh, the community service centers you can also do it with a group of friends you can do it with the people who you really care about and you want to see them in a new environment um maybe in a place where they can be a little bit more vulnerable and and like uh react to to different communities in ways that you haven't really seen before and you can get really close to the, your friends that way and that's something that we really like to see in the csc so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, go for it, Juliet. Sorry. Yeah, I don't want to cut you no, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I think for a lot of people also, um, it can be kind of scary going off and doing community service, especially if you're not super familiar with the Boston area. Um, it can be kind of overwhelming. Maybe people don't know where to start. Um, and maybe there is that sense of um, nervousness, just like going out there and doing something new. And what Sam was saying about being able to volunteer in a group um, and really um, have that sense of security, being with people um, that you're comfortable with, that can uh, make it a lot easier for sure. You know, I, I actually, uh, I feel what you're saying in terms of being scared because um, when I first came to Boston, um, I was just scared to go out. And um, I think Sam might, uh, might share this feeling with me because we came in during COVID so um, um, I was a junior, um, I'm a junior right now, so I was a freshman and COVID was in full force and I was just scared to go out alone. Um, not because of COVID per se, but in general, because it's a new city, um, you're just figuring your way out. But once I started doing it, um, once I started going to the Red Cross, the food pantry, once you start getting oriented with a place, especially if you have friends with you, uh, it does does help you to just like, let loose, be vulnerable, as Sam said, and just, um, I think uh, that's one of the biggest things that students fail to realize. So it's not just about, you know, just giving back. You're not, it's, people think that it's just a boring job and, you know, they don't want to go out of their way to clean a park or just give food to, to someone who needs it. But it's more about your character and actually professional development. So um, just stepping back, how have you guys personally um, benefited, not just you know emotionally, but I guess more professionally from community service? Yeah, I think for me, something that was huge last year, working with the PD Green program, um, I think something that I really benefited, benefited, 
benefited, sorry, from that was um, kind of increasing my own knowledge of, um, you know, the prison industrial complex and mass incarceration. And, um, you know, before I started working with them, I definitely knew kind of in an abstract way, um, you know, that prison is obviously a very scary place and there are a lot of issues um, going on there, but I don't think I knew all of the specifics that I learned from the PD Green program and working uh, with Lynn, um, who's our contact there and is absolutely incredible. Um, I learned so much and I think um, specifically doing volunteering in the Boston area for people that aren't super familiar with Boston and maybe didn't come from here and, you know, want to be the most like conscious member of the community that they can be while they're here. Um, doing service is, you know, a great way to learn about you know, what is going on in this area and what issues are important and what's important to you. So I think education um, has been huge uh, to the volunteer experience for sure. Yeah, uh, for me, one of the greatest experiences doing community service was actually with the built in food pantry. Um, there's a, there's like a very large uh, Chinese community there. And as um, uh, like the son of Chinese immigrants, it was a really great experience for me to work in my communication skills with um, some, some of my translating and really uh, like put myself out there in terms of um, understanding them and trying to uh, communicate with them. And that, that's a position I've never ever been in before. Um, definitely took me out of my comfort zone, but I'm really glad that I did it. And I, I gained a lot of confidence in being able to communicate with others. So. I think communication, definitely. I think that's one of the biggest uh, skills you learn when you're doing community service because one of my buddies, uh, he's uh, Vietnamese, he goes to Northeastern and uh, at the uh, Red Cross Food Pantry, we have a lot of Vietnamese, Chinese, Portuguese, and Spanish speaking people. So uh, funny enough, I used to watch a lot of soccer and Brazilian soccer growing up. So I started picking up on the Portuguese, the Creole that they used to speak. I don't understand a single word, but I know how to pronounce it. So they just give me a clipboard of like sentences to say, and I just like say it in Portuguese and people think I'm Portuguese. So, um, but <laughs> that's just a fun story. But aside from that, Thank I you. think, you know, um, Obviously, communication, as you mentioned, Sam, that you get to talk to a lot of Chinese people. And Juliet, you know, you, you learned a lot about the Boston community, uh, especially because, you know, for a lot of people who are new here, community service is probably the best way to learn about the city. So I guess what do you think has been like what got you into volunteering in the first place? If, if someone's listening and they just need that little push, what do you think? Um, was your personal experience that got you to be like, hey, I want to help people? Um, I, I guess I'll go first. Um, that's a really good question. I think I've always, like growing up, um, I, I've always been very close to like different community service organizations in different ways, um, just like because of school or because of um, church and different communities organizations and things like that. But I, what I realized going into college was that um, there's a special there's a special type of relationship you form with people when you're doing community service that I don't think you get to see in a lot of other places on the college campus. Um, like when you're out in a community um, in, a, in a place that you might not be as familiar with and you're trying to help people, you see a really vulnerable side of people um, that I just really appreciate. Um, and like the stories and the human connections that you hear when you're experiencing these events really are what I think like I want out of the college experience. And so for me, a large part of, of the reason I came to college is to experience that human connection that you don't really get anywhere else. And I think that really makes like, uh, really makes like the, the college experience special. So that's for me. Yeah, similar to Sam, definitely growing up, I uh, volunteered in high school, you know, I did like, honor society, and we had to do hours for that. So I definitely done service before. But then 
I got into the CSC just before my junior year. Uh, so it was coming right out of the kind of hybrid COVID year. Um, I hadn't been able to do a lot on campus. There was a lot of obviously um, uh, really challenging times that year. It was a really you know dark time for everyone, I think. But um, kind of wanting to be more involved during such a dark time kind of uh, made me really interested in the community service center. And I was like, well, maybe I should check this out, see what's going on here. This could be um, a good way to kind of give back and um, get into the social issues that I'm passionate about. So that's kind of how I found the community service center. And I, I definitely agree with everything Sam said. It's a great place to find human connection for sure. And, you know, I've grown so passionate about everything that we do here at the community service center. So I kind of found it in like a happy accident in some random newsletter, but I'm really happy that I did. Well, you know, next time after seeing Sam at Splash, I don't think, you know, it's going to be newsletters. It's going to be people just walking up to you. So it just, I just loved your energy, Sam. I just keep bringing that up. But um, connections, uh, networking, and humility, I think, you know, that's been, that's a universal experience. Whoever I talk to, um, the, the volunteer community, the people you meet, um, they're special. They're, they want to give back and uh, the connection that you make with them going week in, week out, um, you know, you make jokes, you banter, you explore the city and, um, you know, it's just a special connection and seeing people, you know, um, who are less privileged than you, especially when you're young, because, you know, life hasn't gotten up to you yet, at least in a lot of ways that, you know, you don't have a job or you don't have a family to support yet. But when you hear those stories of, you know, um, a Brazilian immigrant or like a Mexican immigrant that that flew um, from that the flew a cartel and now they're supporting five kids, you know, that really gives you humility and you start to realize that, you know, wow, we're privileged. And I think giving back, that's what gives you perspective in life. So um, building off of that, I know, you know, a lot of freshmen might be listening to this. So um you know if you were a freshman and how would you um actually let me rephrase that how would you um introduce the csc to freshmen who are looking to make friends i think that's one of their biggest priorities i tell you to partying by the way sorry uh, go ahead yeah for sure i'd say to all freshmen out there, definitely come visit us on the fourth floor of the GSU. Um, we have so many programs that are honestly hard to get into in um, a short period of time, but we have something for everyone. Um, and if you're nervous about meeting people, honestly, even on the fourth floor, even if you don't have a program that you want to work with yet, or truly just like getting your bearings here, we have people come up here and study all the time. We have people working here all the time that would love to talk to you, would love to meet you. and uh, get a sense of who you are so if you're looking for community i'd honestly just come up and visit so you can talk to us and um you know maybe meet some people and get a sense of what you're looking for and what programs you might be interested in because i think all of our programs have the potential to provide a certain sense of community that can be super valuable yeah for real i i definitely agree with that i've met some really cool people up in the clc like who don't even work here, they're just studying and they're, they're, yeah. they're the sweetest people for sure. Um, I would also say that Boston's a big city. It's not just like the BU campus or like MIT across the river. Like there are huge, huge communities in Boston that are really, really interesting. And I think it's worth it to go explore those communities because like, you know, it'll change your life and it'll, it'll really make you feel like you're a part of the Boston community. Honestly, I think that there's no better message to get freshmen across aside from this. So before um, I dive deep into, um, I guess, life lessons, I do want to mention something. A lot of us in college, um, we're doing jobs, you know, we're TAing or, you know, we work at Starbucks, at Gannis Arena, um, and sometimes financial considerations might be uh, what prevents students from probably participating in community service, even though they want to give back. Um, I know that the CSC has programs where they actually um, pay students to become program leaders, if I'm not wrong. 
Uh, do you guys, would you mind elaborating more on how you can support students um, emotionally and moreover financially? Yeah, sure. There's, oh, sorry. Can... No, go ahead. Yeah. There's a lot of different positions here at uh, the CSC um, that will allow you to be involved in service, but also um, support you financially. Um, an example of which is FISOP, something new that we've been doing is actually paying our uh, staff leaders, um, which, is a, which is a really big deal for us because that allowed students to, you know, give back to the community and uh, help like foster some community here at BU while also being able to support themselves over the summer. Um, that same uh, program um, and attitude uh, works on the other side uh, during the spring break. Alter the alternative uh, spring break program that we have also can provide funding for students who are trying to organize the event um, and like give back to the community in that way. So they also get um, some support that way. Uh, in terms of like what we mentioned earlier, if uh, transportation is an issue, we, all, we can provide um, trolley cards and things like that for students who maybe can't afford it. And we're always willing to listen to students as well. Um, we want people to be going out there doing community service. So if there's any needs that need to be met, we're definitely able to have a conversation about that. Do you wanna add something, Julia? Yeah, no, I think Sam um, pretty much said it all. I mean, you know, both Sam and I uh, do work um, part-time at the Community Service Center in paid positions, and um, it's a great place to work. So if that is something that you're interested in, definitely um, look for positions like that in the spring as well as, as he was saying, with the alternative service breaks, um, co and chair positions, um, uh, which I don't think are paid, but you can um, essentially go on the um, trips um, uh, without having to pay, which is um, obviously um, can be a barrier for some people. And I do think uh, for some of our programs that do require um, people to pay, which I do think would just be um, alternative service breaks, um, there can be, um, more of a burden on students but i would say that most of our programs don't require that students pay and we do uh, try our best to be as accommodating as possible with things like transportation so if you do think that there are um, issues with that i wouldn't hesitate to reach out at all because at the end of the day we want people to volunteer and we want um, everyone that wants to volunteer to be able to um, so if you find yourself kind of facing that barrier uh, i just uh, would really recommend reaching out I think you guys sum it up perfectly. So um, my last question before I end this interview would be, if you could go back and, you know, give advice to your former selves or give advice to someone listening, um, just in general, or, you know, more towards volunteering, what would it be? Um, why don't you go ahead first, Julia, and then we're circling back to Sam. Yeah, I think I'd probably tell my younger self to find the community service center sooner, or at least to put myself out there sooner. I think my freshman year, I was a little timid. I was honestly just trying to like find my place at BU. I was super overwhelmed, but I think that I really could have found com community here if I had, um, you know, been uh, able to ask for it. I guess so. Just um, putting myself out there a little more and you know, doing a little more exploring in community service, coming up to the fourth floor of the GSU, I think those all would have helped me. But at the end of the day, I also did find my way. Uh, so it might happen differently for everyone, but it's never too late um, to start getting involved. So. Yeah, I would say, I mean, biggest piece of advice for anyone is really just, just to do it. Um, I think a lot of people myself included, struggled for a long time to get myself out to do community service for whatever reason, whether it be for the reasons that we listed before, or maybe just because um, the thought of doing community service can be a, a struggle for some people, thinking about how it affects them, how it affects the community, I, because people want to be doing good work. Um, and I know me personally, I struggled with that for a really long time, but going out and doing the service, giving myself the experience and um, the knowledge to decide what I wanted to see out of community service really helped me um, pave my way. Um, and now I'm a, I'm a much more uh, courageous person in that aspect. Um, I have a lot more standards in, in what I want to see in community service, and I have a vision of what I believe is right. And so 
I wouldn't have done that without the experience. And I think it's just really important to be going out there, doing the service, getting that experience, and then, you know, really building it off from there. All right. I think that sums it up perfectly. This has been episode eight, uh, this uh, episode 10. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> lose my mind. I'm becoming, uh, I, need to, I need to eat some almonds, huh? Yeah. Um, this has been episode 10 of the Stu Street Podcast. And I was with uh, Sam Vu and Juliet. Thank you so much, guys, for um, being here. Uh, to everybody listening, check out the CSC, fourth floor of the GSU. Thank you guys. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.